Neutron's assistant, which we get to in the mothership plugin here with this button, helps us make broad mixing decisions early in the mix workflow. It's a great starting point. It'll set up a signal chain and it'll give us a set of streamlined controls and visual hints and tips to help us reach our outcomes faster by making broad kind of macro type changes. So we start by having it listen to the input signal and it'll generate a starting point for the track. And once the analysis is complete, we're gonna get the full assistant view. So I'm gonna, before I run it, just play this little track I'm working on. I was really bad to you, right? yeah. And I have this on the bass part. So I wanna mix the bass sound and start with that. So I'm gonna play it into here. Great, so here's the assistant view and we have the intent controls, which are all these knobs and sliders. We're gonna look at what they do in a moment. And we have a target library over here, and then we have all the meters and displays. So all of these assistant controls are linked to deeper controls that we get to in the detailed view. And when we click here, you'll see that there's a whole chain set up for us with parameters set on each of these modules. Now, before we start looking at what all these controls are linked to, let's just hear what it's come up with for us on its initial run through. So I'm gonna to just toggle this on and off and we can hear it bypassed and then enabled. We'll start with it on. So it's definitely an improvement. Now here in the tone section, we have an equalizer knob, and this is tied to the equalizer mix that we get to in the signal chain in the detailed view here. So for example, let's say I'm gonna dial this down. If we jump back here, we'll see that we have the EQ mix knob that's been modified based on how much of this EQ curve that is generated for us, we want blended in. And there you'll see it's higher up. So that controls the mix of that. Now we can always turn the equalizer on and off. And if I turn it off there, we jump here, we'll see that it's disabled. So these are kind of like remote controls or intent controls to give you broad strokes to make broad changes. Now let's say I go here and I decide, I think I want to change some of this. And we'll look at these modules in more detail later. So I've made some changes there to it. Now I can go back here and we'll toggle it on and off and see if we like it better or not. I think I do like it. Now you'll see we have this indicator here indicating a dirty state for this target preset, meaning it's been changed. And if I want, I can always click that and reset it back to the initial analysis. And if we go back, we'll see the EQ is now reverted to the initial settings that it came up with. And if the intelligent kind of algorithm doesn't detect the right kind of instrument or profile, we can always modify it here and choose a more appropriate profile. In this case, it selected correctly a bass sound, but we can always redo that and then just have the relearn button and it'll modify it again. Let me just revert back to our initial analysis since I don't want to relearn it now and we'll continue. So we've seen that this is linked to the mix knob in the EQ module. This sculptor knob adjusts the amount of spectral tone shaping aimed at matching the target curve. So this is tied to the sculpture module to this amount knob over here. And if I go back and bring this down, we'll see that that knob is down. And if I bring it up from there, we'll get the dirty status knob. So let's hear more of that. And again, that's reflected over there. Now in the dynamics section, we have this density range control, which adjusts the range of the upward compression that's applied as the signal falls below the threshold in the density module. And this is new in Neutron 5, and I'm looking forward to digging into the density module in another video. But basically, we can adjust the amount of it from here, the range of it. 
And if we jump to the detailed view, we'll go to density, and you can see this range control. Which reflects the changes that we make with this intent control. Now the compressor mix knob adjusts the mix of the compression in the compressor module. Here's the mix knob here. We can blend more of it in in parallel. And then back here, we have the Exciter Drive Control Next, which adjusts the drive parameter for all three bands in the Exciter module if you're using the multi-band mode. And it adjusts also the amount of distortion that's applied to the input signal. So again, the idea is that we tweak these knobs from here and you jump into the detailed view if you want to make more nuanced changes, but I just want to show you what it controls here. So I can turn it on or off. We get a fuzzy sound. Need less of it, and you'll see that reflected there. Now here we have the different modes. And if I go back here, it'll show dirty just because I clicked that, but we can adjust these controls from here. So I'm gonna push this up so you can really hear what they're doing. We have the classic and trash modes. And then we get a much more aggressive sound. So these are more subtle. I would probably go for warm and dial it down a bit like that. Now the tone control adjusts the tone control in the exciter module and adjusts the balance of the distortion that's applied to the low and high frequency content in the exciter module. And it varies when we go for values underneath from zero down to minus 100, we're emphasizing the low frequency and values above zero are gonna emphasize the high frequency content, which there won't be much of on a bass sound. But you definitely do hear the buzz, and the tone of the distortion. And again, that's tied to the exciter module and the tone control here. So there's a lot of remote control for the exciter module, as you can see. Now the width control adjusts the global width control in the I.O. panel that we saw in the last video. That's a mono. I can widen it. And that's tied to this width control over here. That's kind of a cool stereo effect. So very cool how with a quick assistance analysis and a few tweaks of the broad intent controls, you can get pretty close to where you want to be. I'm going to end off here, and in the next video, we're going to look a little more closely at these target curves and how to bring in our own custom ones.